As we move on in our service, we are going to uh, talk about another great question. Another great question. And today, we are going to talk about grace. And the question that we're going to look at is, what is grace? What is grace? Well, a simple definition of grace is God's unmerited favor. God's unmerited favor. So at the beginning of the service, I talked about the God that we worship, and I talked about how God doesn't give us what we deserve, and he does give us what we don't deserve. That's the God that we worship, and that's what we mean when we talk about grace. What is grace? It is God's favor upon us. Even when we deserve it the least, he continues to show it. It means that when we have sinned, God hasn't turned his back on us. Instead, the scriptures tell us that God continues to, to favor us with his blessing. That's what we're going to talk about today, grace. And to do that, we're going to look at a passage of Scripture that the Apostle Paul wrote when he was writing to the Romans. Now, you remember, Paul wrote to the Romans to get their support. And he outlined his theology in this book. And one of the things that he talked about was how Jesus was our substitute. That when Jesus died, he died so that you and I wouldn't have to experience spiritual death. He died in our place to pay our penalty because we could never pay it on ourselves. He was the only one that never sinned. And since we sinned, there was nothing that we could do that would ultimately pay the penalty for our own sin. And so Jesus he paid it for all of us. But not only does Paul talk about Jesus being a substitute, he says that Jesus is our representative. And so just as he died and rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, he is a representative guaranteeing that one day we will do the same thing. That's God's grace. And that's what we're going to talk about. In Romans chapter 6, Paul says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's found in verse 23. Let me tell you that this passage of Scripture, even for those of you who don't like to memorize, this passage of Scripture is a good one to commit to memory. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Now, I want you to understand how this verse was written using parallel statements. Really, it's a lesson in contrast. As we look at it, we can see that Paul is taking words and matching them up against other words. And I want to explain this to you today. So notice first that Paul says the wages of sin and the gift of God. So here is the first contrast of two things that are the polar opposites. Wages. The Greek word upsonia referred to the salary the wages that were paid to a soldier who served his emperor and served him well. The wages were what he would be paid at the end of the day for a day's labor. And so even in our day and age, the word still means the same thing. You and I go to the office, or you and I uh, labor in the fields, or you and I work in, in the trades. And we understand that because we put in honest work and honest effort, that we deserve 
to be paid. And so Paul, as he writes this, he says the wages of sin. He says when we sin, we deserve something. He tells us that when we sin, that there are consequences that we are going to face. And one of the consequences of sin is physical death and ultimately spiritual death. It's wages that we, listen, wages that we deserve because of our actions. It's not that God is some cruel, mean ogre that just can't wait to hand out punishment. We deserve it. We were the ones with a rebellious heart who strayed away from God. We wanted to be little gods, demigods, and make our own decisions and pretend as if God didn't exist. But this passage reminds us that there is consequences to our actions. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And all too often, we're not prepared for that. But the Bible tells us that that's the case. So that's one half of the contrast, wages. But look at the other half, the gift. The gift. Wages we deserve, wages we earned. The gift is not something that we deserve. It's a surprise. It's a blessing. It's favor that's given to us. And that's what God says that he does to us. Interesting. This word gift is the word charis or charisma. Where we get the English word charismatic. You may know some people who are charismatic. The, the life of the party. The party. And they walk into a room, they just ooze self-confidence and have a smile on their face and, and people are just attracted to them and, and want to hear what they say. There's just some grace about them. They are the life of the party or a gift to the party. And that word, charismatic, comes from the Greek word, charis, which means simply a gift. God's gift to us is grace. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. That would have been impossible. God gave it to us because he's a benevolent God. He's the giver of every good and perfect gift. He loves to bless his people. Even in the Old Testament figure, Abraham, God said, I will bless you and make you a father of a great nation, and you in turn will bless others. God continues to do that for us. Everything that's good in our life, that's God. Think about that. Everything that's good in our life, that's God. Paul goes on. The second set of contrasts. Sin, the Greek word here stresses rebellion, stresses breaking a law, stresses the inability to, to meet a standard. That describes each one of us. Even in our best day, we realize that we fall. We fall short of the mark. Even though we, we try with our, our best effort, it seems that in our thought world, uh, in our motive, in our actions, in, in our words, that we miss the mark, fall short, rebel in our heart. That's our life. That's a sad, sad testimony. Each one of you who are listening on your computers today, would have to agree that that's me. That's me. So Paul says sin, and, and what's the opposite of sin? Well, the opposite of sin is theos, God, the one who is holy, 
the one who's never sinned, the one who is perfect, the one who says, be holy as I am holy, or be perfect even as I am perfect. This is what God says to us. God, the God of grace, the perfect holy one, he is the one who has done all of this for us. And so we have wages, what we earned. And we have a gift given grace that we didn't deserve. And we have sin, rebellion, missing the mark, falling short. And we have the God of grace, perfect. But there's another set of contrasts too. And that is, the wages of sin is death. Way back in the very beginning, in the biblical story of Adam and Eve, God warned them, in the day that you eat the fruit of that tree, you will surely die. Because of sin, death entered the world. That wasn't supposed to be our experience Physical death was not to be what happened to us. We were meant to enjoy God and to live with him in this beautiful universe forever. But sin, sin in our life, the wages, what we deserve for the wrong that we have done, our sin is death. Physical death. And even worse than that, spiritual death. So not only, not only does our heart stop breathing, breathing and our body be put in the ground one day, but spiritual death occurs at the end of time when we are separated from God's presence forever and live eternity apart from him, the second death, spiritual death. All who sin fall short of the glory of God and experience this. This is what you have to look forward to. Death, physical death, and then one day, spiritual death. But that's not what God wanted for us. God wanted us to live, to live eternally and to enjoy his presence forever. To worship him and to enjoy his blessing in this beautiful world that he has given us to live in. He wanted us to have life. To have life. To have life to the max, to have life fulfilling, to have life in abundance. That's what God had in mind for us. And he says that his gift that we don't deserve to us, that the God of grace, what he's going to give us is life beyond anything that we could ever imagine. That's what God has in store for you. That's what God has in store for you. Years ago, when I was a teenager living in Moncton, um, I uh, had a teacher in grade seven and for the first two months of grade eight who was completely exasperated by my behavior. Um, even going so far to tell my parents that I was a candidate for reform school if I didn't smarten up. Now, before you're too hard on that teacher for saying that, I really wasn't a good student, and I really did misbehave. But a funny thing happened. So that was grade 7 or 8. Never saw the man again. I'm in high school. Um... Approaching the end of high school, actually it was post high school, I was 19 years old, and I'm working at Sobeys, and for some reason I didn't have a car that day. And so I decided to do what was common then, 
and hitch a ride home. Now, here are my options. I could have called a taxi and paid a taxi. The taxi would have earned the wage I could have paid him. But instead of taking my hard-earned money that I earned from bagging groceries, I went out and stood on the side of the road, put my thumb up, and hitched a ride. Who picked me up but none other than that same school teacher? And he picked me up, and uh, all the way home, it was like he was trying to say something. He was trying to ask me something, and, and he struggled. And he struggled. And at the end, he wanted to, to witness to me and tell me about Jesus. And at the end of the ride, I had a big smile on my face. And as he finally got it out and wanted to know if I wanted to accept Jesus as my Savior, I told him that uh, I was a believer and that I was on my, uh, my way to study to be a minister one day. All of that conversation happened because that man gave me a free ride and didn't charge me to take me home. That's what God does for you and for me. God gives us a free ride. God gives us his grace freely. Not that God turns and winks at sin and pretends it didn't exist, next week we're going to answer that question of how a, a God of grace can give us life and at the same time deal with the sin that's part of our life. Today, we just want to point out that God gives grace to each of us as we begin to, to wrap things up today. I want to talk to you about uh, a phrase that was in a book in, by Phil Yancey uh, called uh, What's So Amazing About Grace? And he talked about the scandal of grace. The scandal of grace. And you think, what in the world is the scandal of grace? God does all of this for us. How could it be scandalous? Well, I want to draw your mind back to Calvary. Jesus died on a cross. But you remember that there were two criminals who hung beside him. And one of those criminals, after he had lived a life where he committed crimes, was put on the cross, and at the very end of his life, Jesus forgave him for his sin and said, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. I'm willing to venture a guess that there would have been people who looked on and said, How can Jesus forgive that common criminal's sin after everything that he has done? That's scandalous. Now, I want us to, to jump forward to our day and age. Jeffrey Dahmer. That's a name that has a sour note in our minds like Judas Iscariot. Jeffrey Dahmer was a serial killer who murdered and dismembered 17 men and boys. In 1991, he was captured and imprisoned. And while he was in prison, he heard the gospel message about God's grace. And we are told that he repented of all the wrong that he had done, including those murders. And he asked God to forgive him and put his faith in Jesus Christ. And that God did forgive him. 1994, he was murdered by another inmate, ending his life on earth, physical death. But because he embraced Jesus as his Lord and Savior, 
He will avoid the second death, spiritual death, and he will enjoy God's presence forever. And some people will say that's scandalous. How could God ever let him into heaven after everything that he's done? The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. All of us. Some stray farther than others, but we've all gone astray. And the only hope that all of us have is the grace of God. We can never play the comparison game and say, well, I'm not as bad as Judas Iscariot. I'm not as bad as Jeffrey Dahmer. You see, we may not be that bad, but we're bad enough. Our sin separates us. The wages of our sin is death. But the gift that God offers us is life in abundance on earth and life eternal when we die. Have you experienced God's grace? Do you know that God wants to shower you with his grace today? I invite you to pray this prayer with me so that the result, the wages of your sin isn't spiritual death, but instead you experience the gift of God, his grace. Pray this prayer with me. Father in heaven, I thank you for your grace that you don't give me what I deserve, but instead you offer me life. And you offer me life because of Jesus. Today I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Shower me with your blessings so that I experience life in abundance. For I repent of my sin and will seek to serve you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, I invite you to phone the number that is on your screen this morning. And uh, there is someone there who will talk to you and pray with you and congratulate you on the commitment that you've made. May God bless you. May God keep you safe. And may God continue to shower you with the blessings of his grace. Amen.